I'm here with the amazing Charlie for Australian Made. How are you going, gorgeous? I'm so good. How are you? I'm good. I'm so excited to see you. Oh my God, I'm so excited to be I here. I have been a fan of you only for a little while. I'm going to admit that. Ever since my best friend, Kath's new music video for Worst Taste in Girls. We love Kath. So Kath and I best friend, for those of you who were listening, um, <laughs> they did one time swear on air, we had to dump them and then we had to um, ban them from the show for a year. But they're allowed back now. <gasps> I didn't even know that. Yeah. Well, it's we dumped it. Like okay. we, we got rid of it off right. the airwaves because they swore right. and there was this whole like boycotting against Kath. <gasps> but they're allowed back now. Okay. So Words Testing Girls is your first queer song, right? Yes. Tell us the process of that. Yeah, I, I made this song last year when someone broke my heart a lot and I really just needed to get it out and yeah this is the first queer song that I really made mm. and it's kind of just a generalization because I hadn't been with any other girls so it was just just one <laughs> girl well it was it wasn't a lie you'd have the yeah. worst taste in girl yeah yeah in girl <laughs> I'm a bisexual queen but I've only ever yes. just slept with women I haven't ever dated any right I've had feelings for two okay and what happened well she was my best friend. Yeah, and it was my first queer experience. See, that's that's where you I go know. wrong. This I is so And we lived part. together. <laughs> and then and then oh, I'll just tell you my story. So tell me. and then she she was my roommate. You lived and together. We lived together and then we had sex and then I got all like ah! and then um Did they did she stop talking to you? Like did it go weird automatically? Well I was the one who kind of distanced because internalized homophobia. I was like, I'm not queer. I just um in like to have sex with women and have feelings for women. Okay. Yeah. And then nothing more. Yeah, that's it. That's all it is, is that I was in love with a woman the one time sex with like that means I'm still like super straight, right? Yeah. At age twenty one. So I was looking at performing us for us is Heartbreaker. It's a new one. Yes. Again, babe. The depression, yeah, the sadness. It's so bad. She's been through it. Tell us about <laughs> that one. It's about the same person that broke your heart yes. for worst tasting girls. Jesus Christ. Actually, no, that was, I just said yes, and that was a complete lie. <laughs> so this was about a guy that I dated for a long time, mm-hmm. and he, he was a very bad human. But Gold. we send love, we, we let that go, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So when did you write it? Because this is a the most recent release of yours. Yes. So did you write it, hold on to it, and then wait for more heartbreak to add to it? Time Bombs, my debut EP, finally, is coming out. Um, and I wrote most of these songs last year when I went on a trip to America and Sweden. Mm-hmm. And it was when I just thought I was bisexual. And mm-hmm. this was like the first time that I'd ever liked a girl as well. Mm-hmm. And, you know, she was a mask and she was my best friend as well. So I was like... Wow. But then um, I was over in Nashville and I wrote Heartbreaker and I was near the person. And all I wanted to do was just go in Edgar's house. And I was so fucking mad because I was finally in the same city as him because we did long distance. Oh. Anyways, so I was just so mad. So that's why I wrote this song. You were going Edgar's I think you should have, did you? Oh, no. no. Sorry, I don't condone that I at all. I actually don't condone vandalism. No. No, we never do that. I didn't go Edgar's. One of my friends once put um, yogurt in her ex's um, <laughs> uh, air conditioning vents in his car. <laughs> and then it, in, in babe, Queensland summer. Imagine Queensland summer oh, yogurt no. through the vents. Isn't that fucked yeah. up? Yeah. <laughs> I, my brain's really ticking. Yeah. <laughs> all the things you could have done. All the things I could have done. instead you wrote an amazing song. So oh. really you channeled it into positivity yes. and creativity. Yes. And you released it into the world for our, for our joy. Yeah. So something you've also spoken about quite openly is anxiety and depression mm-hmm. and mental health. Yeah. Do you, I spoke to Mia Ray recently on my podcast and when she's been at her lowest points, she's kind of harnessed that that depression to create amazing music. Do you find that that's easy to do or something that you do do or do you kind of feel like, <laughs> oh, I'm monetizing my pain, this is so annoying, why can't I even be in pain without having to make music? I've got a couple of things to say about that. Go. Okay, so... Number one, I don't think I can make music when I'm really depressed because I just cry mm-hmm. and I just get <laughs> really overwhelmed. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, I just can't function. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, depending what's good for you, I take citrulopram, which is an antidepressant. And wow. that has made me, and it's just made me <laughs> like calm. I don't cry when someone says something mean to me. I'm like, okay. 
I can accept it. Yeah. Okay. And then what was the question again? Where music, was the depression. Music, depression. Okay. Do you feel like monetizing your sadness and monetizing your personal life? Because I have that issue with my podcast where I have to choose what things are yeah. for me and for the public. And yeah. it's generally the latter, unfortunately. Because yeah. I go, I've got no content. And if you're like, if, if your life is boring, then what the fuck are you going to talk about, no, right? If you're in a nice. happy relationship, what, what, what do you... What So I'm... Well, do you know what Rule does? What? Rule came on and he said... So he said that he just like watches... Because I said, babe, this last album is depressing. Yeah. Like, are you okay? What's happened? And he was like, oh, I'm in a happy relationship. And I was like... Um, so it's fake? Yeah. So he said that what happens is he will think about... He'll like watch movies and see certain scenes from movies or things in pop culture and he'll imagine himself in that situation. Oh, my God. Empathetic <gasps> thing. It's like watching Grey's Anatomy. Have you ever watched that? No, I was just going to say yes and lie to you, but I couldn't. But no, no, I've thank not you seen for, it. Thank you for being no, honest. No, I've not seen I it. I really appreciate no, you, okay. you being honest with you me. You looked me in the eyes and I panicked. So, no, <laughs> I, I've not seen Grace and Adam. Oh, my God. I feel like when I watch a TV show and it's like, it's really intense, y- y- apparently your brain feels like it's gone through that trauma. <gasps> really? So, it's like, imagine if you're singing about these songs and you're writing them and you're just like tricking yourself to have this trauma. I feel wow. Like, I feel like my brain would do that. But oh, my God. Hashtag Are free okay? rule. Is he okay? Are you okay, <laughs> rule? Should we message him and ask him? But he also said that he's he writes songs about what he thinks the worst case scenario for his relationship. True. Like, what he's scared of happening. Again, yeah. bad manifestation techniques from Rule. Yeah. So maybe. Yes. Because that's what this. That's what Worst Tasting Girls was. It was before literally anything happened. And then did you keep choosing and then bad I, girls? And then I kept on choosing the same that same person, the same girl. Okay. Kept on going back to her and I was like, wow. What she's actually doing everything. I was. It goes both ways. What? Because you were. <laughs> involving yourself in it or you were yeah. also bad yeah yeah are you just, anxious and then they usually avoid it i'm such an anxious attachment oh my oh, god it's terrible me too <laughs> so do you go for avoidance all the time yes i go for people who don't want me yeah isn't that great yeah. emotionally unavailable it's so good all right moving away from all your relationship history <laughs> so and anxiety and depression and da, da, da. now onto music so eurovision australia decides yes can fall Seem very australia de- serious australia <laughs> Decide. Thank you for nearly representing the country. Decide. You came forth and nearly representing the forth. country. How do you feel about it? Do you still have Eurovision goals? Uh, maybe, maybe down the line. I just don't want to be known as the TV show girl. Neither. That would <laughs> suck. <laughs> if you're known no, as the but TV show. you've already, you've fucking done it. Like you, you're amazing. And I, I haven't, I haven't gotten you know what i mean what do you want to be known as then i haven't really said any words but do you get me i kind of get you yeah, yeah. like you want to be known as like you don't want to get your big break from, from the tv show and then forever you are the the girl from the one year yes yes exactly. rather than just a consistent slow increase yeah, in profile in and my doing own music and really building up with you know myself and my yeah my team yeah because i could just scared of maybe i mean i would be scared of that in terms of like living up to that um not virality but i guess virality mm. in a way where you, it, people would come to shows just because of one song or because of one thing do you reckon that would be a fear i mean for a start i don't really like doing the tv shows because you get just one chance to show a song or whatever mm. whereas in your own shows obviously you can just be yourself yeah. sing your songs have your band yeah. And in the, all those, it's just to track. It's just really. Um, it's, just it's like really clinical. Uh, like, yeah, it's yeah. so clinical. Like getting a pap smear. Oh my God, it's getting a pap it's smear. It's a pap smear. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of being yourself, on your socials, you're like a relatable girly. Okay. Is that strategic or is that like accidental? Because mine's accidental. Like you're co- I'm constantly having to promote my music, obviously. I mean, you're the same with all your shows. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I'm just constantly on TikTok like, oh, what can I do? What can I do? What can I do? Mm. And then in my own brain. So it's it's like it's it's obviously my own creativity, but. But you have to post certain content. I just have to post so much. Do you think you'd be on TikTok if you didn't have to, if you didn't have to post? Yeah. You think you would? Yeah. See, whenever I, I have time I off work, I delete it. <laughs> you like the attention? Yeah. I mean, anxiously Sometimes. attached girlies unite. Final question <laughs> is, what's going on with the mowing? <laughs> okay, so Charlie on um on on Twitter 
um, Charlie's mowing. Uh, yes. There's beautifully, I'm going to say, oh almost like scarily photoshopped photos of you <laughs> mowing. Uh, no. What's oh. going on? You have a thing for certain patches of grass. So, I don't know when it started. No, why did I? Why did I think of that this morning? I was like, I really, I think she might talk to me about my grass. <laughs> Parent, like a vision, like that's a raven, like <laughs> grass. So, no, so my fans made the grass thing because I was like, I mean, those those pictures, mm. um, because I just started being like, wow, some grass is really bad, and then some grass is just like so lush. Like you go to mm. LA and it's like squishy. And you just want to walk in it and sleep on it. Oh, is it? And then, so I just started posting pictures of grass and rating them just because I was like. Like you just quirky. love certain grass. You and are then, so quirky and relatable. I know. <laughs> wow. So you just love certain patches of grass. That's all there is to it. Okay. So you're doing two songs for us. Yes. Heartbreaker. Wait. He's gonna I've got a present for you. Oh, my, you got a present. Sorry. Why is everyone bringing a present suddenly? Guys, musicians, stop it. Stop it. What is it? Okay. <sighs> okay. It's on the bag. It says it's electric and musical. Is that it related that's at all? So that's, <gasps> that's my label. <laughs> no, okay. So everyone, I've gotten Crocs and this is so <laughs> exciting because producer Brooke, EP Brooke has Crocs. And I've been painfully jealous of her fucking Brooke and I always feel like, am I cool enough? Am I cool enough to wear a Croc? I'm putting them on. I'm putting them so on. The good thing about these ones is I made, I made Croc gibbets. <gasps> So there's Charlie, and this is a bow from my music video in the little in the little dungeon scene, and that's the the cover art. With the words. the music video for Worst Tasting Girls. Yeah, the exactly. The Kath scene. Oh my god! So basically, yeah. it's Kath and you on my hoof. Yes. Uh, oh my god! Hang on, I need to put them on. I need a. Can I put your shoes on for you? Yeah. Okay, so I can. Wow! 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 Brooke, do I look good? Mum, do I look good? Yeah. Wow. Wow. Okay. Mind, oh my anyway. god, that's so that's so shit. Okay, sit down so we can choose songs okay. by my crocs. Okay. Okay, so <laughs> on Hot Nights with Abby and her crocs, you're performing tonight Heartbreaker on the radio, which is gonna be so amazing. Obsessed. Thank you. Depression vibes. <laughs> and then on the digital exclusive, you're performing Worst Tasting Girls. So Good job, you remembered the name. I did because but I, <laughs> babe, I'm really I, Okay. Listen. Listen, so, yeah. I know the name of the song <laughs> deep down in my brain. <laughs> I just know how it kind of goes. You know what I mean? Yes. Wow. Good nodules. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do it. Okay.